I'm currently walking along the Riverway in Boston's Fenway neighborhood, and although we've already had our first frost, a couple weeks ago we were still in Triple E season. I'm on my way to meet up with John Connor, a virologist at Boston University's National Emerging Infectious Diseases Laboratories, and I'm excited to talk to John about why is it that we're so fascinated and afraid about a disease like Triple E when flu season is knocking on our door right now, and we know that many thousands of people will be impacted. So John, thanks so much for coming out today. We're here at the Time Out Market in Boston's Fenway neighborhood. Great gathering place for a lot of folks. That makes me wonder, as a virologist, are there any pet peeves you see where you just really shake your head and think, you know, that is a transmission <laughs> of a viral load waiting to happen? Uh, so I will say generally, I think that folks around the city are pretty responsible. It's not that people are just spreading a disease willy nilly. But yes, I will say that the times when you walk into the tea and someone is obviously sick and sneezing, I will probably try to stay away from that person. What do you think about this whole triple E scare that we've been dealing with all summer, all fall? It feels like the news media has been dominated by talk about triple E. Is that fear founded in, in reality? <laughs> so I, I would say that there's a tremendous amount of concern that's beyond the actual risk. My daughter runs cross country and there were people debating whether they should run because of a potential risk. I have to say I personally see it as a very low risk. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen. But the overall potential to become infected, it appears to be pretty small. There are things that you can do, but I think it does capture people's imagination. And the fact that you don't really know what to do. And if I were to contrast flu and, and Triple E, there really isn't something that people have decided on as a working cure and are in our society and understood as ways that can provide protection. So we're about to be entering flu season right here in Boston. In fact, yeah. we're sort of already, we're already, already in. in it. And I have to ask, why do we experience flu season now, like clockwork? So flu season is essentially brought to us by the, the regular movement of the virus out of often Asia where these strains initiate. And they're brought across by various migratory patterns or even travel patterns. Birds are migratory. They could bring H5N1 from uh, an originating site in Asia. It can also be transmitted by people. Right? People get on planes all the time. And flu is an excellent example of a virus that is pretty transmissible. It's something where people can exchange it. And once you get a few initial cases in the United States, unfortunately, we as people are really good vectors. Right. We will be able to transmit it to different people and spread it. It would be really nice if we had perfect vaccine protection so that if there was one initial case, everybody around us would be protected. But I think we're not there yet. And that means that we serve as our own transmitters. We've talked about several different viruses. We've talked about Tripoli. E. What's the number one that we should be really worried about and thinking about here in Boston? Given the season, uh, I would say that Influenza is really the thing to be worried about. Things you can do to mitigate risk are things that I think people already know how to do, right? Wash your hands, get the flu vaccine. They're highly effective. And what should we say to family and friends that may not want to get the flu vaccine? I would ask them to do it if not for themselves, for you. The concern is not necessarily that they will have a bad reaction to the flu, but that they will transmit it to someone else who will have a bad reaction.